and welcome to National Focus. I am Shakira Peer. In the headlines, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt led a cabinet delegation to the Anichi Resort and Spa in Portsmouth. Dominica China Friendship Hospital will not be privatized, and the official launch of independence is carried for Saturday, October 10, 2020. Details of the headline stories and more when we return. We wear pink for mothers. We wear pink for daughters. We wear pink for sisters. We wear pink for wives. We wear pink for women. Breast cancer has been the most frequent cancer diagnosed in women worldwide, impacting 2.1 million women annually. Majority of these cases are diagnosed in late stages, resulting in the greatest number of cancer-related deaths in women. This October, GIS encourages women to do their annual checkups, perform self-breast checks, and talk to your doctor about any changes you may notice. GIS stands with mothers. GIS stands with daughters. GIS stands with sisters. GIS stands with women. We fight together, together. Welcome back. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt led a cabinet delegation to the Anichi Resort and Spa in Picard, Portsmouth to get a first-hand view of the progress of the project. Alia Martin reports. This 128-room resort is financed through the Citizenship by Investment Program and is expected to create employment in Portsmouth and environs. Prime Minister Skerritt says he is pleased with the progress made thus far, in spite of the challenges posed by COVID-19. Prime Minister Skerritt spoke of the benefits of this project. I want to commend uh, developers uh, for <clears throat> the progress thus far, notwithstanding all of the challenges that they faced with the hurricane in 2017, of course, COVID. Uh, we were very pleased with the progress. We are. Uh, waiting with great anticipation for the completion of the project where we can welcome guests but this is a major investment in the in the country and of course in particular the North of Dominica and uh, the partnership between uh, Anichi and the government has been very uh, mutually uh, beneficial for us it is about creation of jobs uh, both in construction and during the operations of the hotel uh, bringing in foreign exchange where we have tourists coming in and, and having the multiplier effect. Prime Minister Skerritt says the addition of this resort goes hand in hand with government's plan for the construction of the international airport, providing quality accommodations for all visitors. I think with, with the, the plans the government has for the construction of the airport, the international airport, will certainly enhance our opportunities. Um, here in Dominica. We have a unique product, um, you know, this is the Nature Isle, you know, we have the natural flora and fauna and people are looking, discerning tourists and visitors are looking for a place to, to really relax and to rejuvenate and, and not to be crowded on a beach um, somewhere, you know, they want a place that is peaceful and, and I don't think there's anywhere in, in the world where one can have this, this tranquility. Um, that, that we need, that peace that we need. Member of Parliament for the Portsmouth constituency, Honorable Ian Douglas, says government is committed to expanding the tourism sector and hopes to build a resilient company through the construction of these resorts. So we're very excited about this project and um, we wish the developer and um, his team well and, and we hope that there will be um, no more uh, challenges like COVID so that the project can move smoothly along to completion so that we can continue to build that resilient economy that we speak about because that is what resilience is all about creating uh, um, um, sustainable jobs so that when somebody comes to work at this hotel they could go into the bank and to the credit union take a mortgage because they know they have a permanent job 
to come to, and that's what this government has been creating ever since we got in. We told Dominicans if they would bear with us, if they would have patience with us, we would repair uh, the economy and make it more robust, more resilient, and more sustainable. And this is a remarkable evidence of that. Developer Mr. Alec Lawrence says construction of the resort has been negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The, the main contractor who was supposed to do the other buildings is from the Dominican Republic, and they were not able to come in due to COVID. Um, this building and this one here were done by the same contractor. And the way the contractors operate, it doesn't make sense mobilizing all your people at the same time. They mobilize people to do the work that's at hand. So they had not mobilized people to do the block work. And by the time they were ready to mobilize, COVID had struck and they were not able to bring in the block, the block, work, um, block workers. We are looking, looking to give that to a Dominican contractor. So we are in, in discussions hoping we can give that to a Dominican contractor. Mr. Lawrence informed that many Dominicans are employed on the project. 71 people are currently employed. These two buildings are suites. They are being done by Stuco Construction. I was very shocked to, to listen when I heard in the House, um, during the budget, I believe, a member of parliament saying that there were no local contractors employed on the project. Um, that was, I was quite a shock, although having regards to who said it, I should not have been shocked. <laughs> but um, one is always shocked when somebody doesn't speak the truth, when the truth is so well known or can so easily be, be found out. Okay, so in addition to, to Stuco, we have um, Fast Company. They've done a lot of our excavation and trucking and earth movement. We've had judge trucking, we've done a lot of, of similar type of work. And even for the foreign contractor, they've had local subcontractors. So they, they, they still do. So they have a considerable amount of um, local employment. The steel guy, the guy who did all the steel bending on the project, is a local contractor called Ronald. Alia Martin for the Government Information Service. The National Health Commission was appointed by the Government of Dominica as a policy advisory body to assess the status of and to make recommendations for the improvement of the health services in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Octavia Prosper has more. The Commission has kept its commitment to ensuring that all Dominicans receive excellent care at the Dominica China Friendship Hospital. Following a press briefing on Thursday, October 8, 2020, Deputy Chairperson of the National Health Commission, Mrs. Jennifer Astafan, says the hospital will not be privatized and every individual will be treated equally. The Commission wishes to reiterate that its mandate is to preserve and ensure that its advice is in accordance with international principles and best practice. Commission wishes to emphasize that there is no recommendation for the privatization of the hospital and that no one will be denied health care because of inability to pay for service. And that non-discrimination clause has been included in the draft bill. The Commission has recommended the removal of clause 32 in the current draft bill. The clause which deals with contracts and has proved to be a source of confusion and misunderstanding. Mrs. Astafan says there will also be an introduction of new departments at the hospital. The introduction of new departments such as human resource, quality management, finance and budgeting and engineering services will all serve to enhance the delivery of the quality of care in a modern 21st century hospital facility. There is no recommendation for the denial of benefits which are currently enjoyed by staff and which will inure to their detriment. Remember, this is a public facility to serve us all. Mrs. Astafan says the reform agenda will consist of four pieces of legislation which includes the Allied Health Bill which is an outstanding piece of legislation. Four pieces of legislation will guide the initial implementation of this reform agenda. The Dominica Hospitals Authority Bill, the Medical Professions Bill, the Nursing Professions Bill, and the Pharmacy Bill. One outstanding piece of legislation is the Allied Health Personnel Bill, which will be taken at a later date. 
She says the main goal of the reform is to ensure that the public receives quality health care. The intention is to create a modern, efficient approach to hospital care and to the development of health professionals through regular, continuing education. The main goal of the reform is to ensure that the Dominican populace receives the quality of care from the sole public hospital on the island. The National Health Commission has published the four bills to be enacted on the Government of Dominica's website. Octavia Prosper for the Government Information Service. Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Octavia Alfred, says a small number of students doing technical and vocational education and training subject exams during the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate Examination is cause for concern. Minister Alfred says she is proud of the performance shown in the TVET subjects over the years, highlighting the performance of three students from the Goodwill Secondary School. I also note the encouraging performances of our students in technical and vocational subjects. The ministry can boast of significant inroads in that area in recent years, a direct result of investment of over $11 million in TVET under the Dominica Education Enhancement Program. We are proud to note the success of three students of the Goodwill Secondary School who obtained their CVQ qualifications in garment production. It means they are now armed with the important certificate that can open doors to rewarding careers here and in the region. The education minister says the reducing number of students sitting the TVET exams is cause for concern as she believes that there is need for more technically trained citizens. It makes my heart glad that we are recording success with providing students with marketable skills in non-traditional subject areas. However, even while the ministry makes strides in the development of TVET, we are seeing very small numbers sitting the exams in areas such as technical drawing, food and nutrition, electricity and clothing and textile. This is certainly an area of concern for me, as I believe there's an increasing need for more technically trained citizens who can successfully shop their skills to employers in Dominica, the region, and further afield. Minister Alfred says the ministry will continue to provide students with quality education programs to ensure they are fully equipped to lead successful lives. Skills are the new currency. We are being told nowadays, and the Ministry of Education sees its responsibility, the preparation of students to respond and excel within the new realities of the job market. As ministry, we will continue to afford our students the opportunities to access the highest quality of education at our schools in TVET and all areas of study as we prepare them to build successful lives in a competitive global environment. Dominica continues to do well. And as the analysis note, we sit at 3.95% above the regional average in 2020, performing above the regional average in 25 out of our 33 CSEC subjects. You will agree with me that this is no reason to become complacent. And so we ask for the support of our teachers, principals, parents, and community as we formulate the most effective intervention to ensure that our students continue to do better. In the 2020-2021 budget, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, announced that the tax amnesty will be given to individuals and businesses as this year is an extraordinary one as the world is dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and many livelihoods were affected, resulting in loss of jobs. Effective August 1, 2020 to November 30, 2020, government waived the interest and penalties due on outstanding personal income tax, withholding tax, corporate tax, excise tax, and value-added tax liabilities in respect to tax periods prior to 2019. 
These waivers will only apply if all of the principal taxes owed for the respective tax types are paid between August 1 and November 30, 2020. Mrs. Silma Lloyd is the controller of the Inland Revenue Department. With respect to the, the, the pronouncements made by the Honorable Prime Minister during his budget address to grant an amnesty to taxpayers, um, re the taxes for years 20, prior to 2019, sorry. Um, a lot of taxpayers have taken advantage of, of that um, opportunity and have um, contacted the department via our email, um, through writing, or they've walked in and requested. And um, we must say that um, um, we've seen good results so far. Although we would have expected a lot more persons to take advantage, but um, given the economic situation right now, um, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, I am almost certain that that would have hindered persons having to be able to pay. Mrs. Lloyd encouraged individuals to take advantage of the tax amnesty put in place by government. Persons can come in. Um, we can help to facilitate the process by um, allowing you to make um, installment payments um, against your taxes. Once the full tax balances are paid within the period August 1st to November 30th, then um, penalty and interest will be waived. Um, persons who will, well, the taxes um, for which the, the, the amnesty applies um, includes the personal income tax, the corporate income tax, withholding tax, um, the excise tax, and um, the, effect, well, the effective date, as I said, was August 1st, 2020 to November 30th, 2020, and um, the amnesty only relates to the waiver of the penalty and the interest. Mrs. Lloyd spoke of the importance of paying taxes. Taxes are imposed on, on citizens of a country to help them to contribute to national development. And um, we are aware that through the collection of taxes, the government is able to um, meet social needs of the, of the people, um, develop the country um, through capital projects, infrastructural um, development, etc. So um, it is quite important that um, persons who owe taxes um, settle the amounts that they owe. She encouraged the public to pay their taxes and says the Inland Revenue Department is always willing to assist citizens with the payment process. I'd like to encourage everyone to, to, um, to pay your taxes, to come into Inland Revenue. We are always willing and able to, to assist in any way. We have... Um, We have different mediums in which you can, you can um, pay. You can pay online. We have an e-filing portal available. Um, if you need assistance, you can always call the department. Um, there are compliance officers always available. So um, if you are also unable to meet your full commitments, um, Payments, payment schedules can be, can be um, made, um, so arrangements can be made for payment schedules. You're watching National Focus more when we return.
Welcome back. Acting Deputy Chief of Police Davidson Valerie says despite the efforts of the Dominica Police Force for the illegal entry and exit out of Dominica, the police continues to receive numerous calls of individuals entering the country illegally. Deputy Chief Valerie says over the past few months, the police force has been doing all in its power to seize illegal entry into Dominica. The police operations have been successful to a large extent. Airboats have been seized for, illegal, for investigations. Out of the many people who were reported to have illegally entered into Dominica, four have been convicted, six are pending trials, and 22 are pending investigations. DCP Valerie says the force has been reliably informed that family members are aiding and abetting persons entering the country illegally. These individuals will also be charged if evidence is provided to the police. We are reliably informed that individuals entering Dominica illegally are being protected by families and friends. Anyone who aids and abets another in the commission of illegal entry commits an offense and will be liable to prosecution in accordance with the law, the penalty of which is $3,000. It is time that we accept responsibility for our actions. We have said over and over that the French territories of Guadeloupe and Martinique have recorded a large number of reported COVID-19 cases. Yet we allow our families to enter the island illegally, knowing fully well that they are in violation of the protocols in place. DCP Valerie says the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force will continue to bring the perpetrators to justice. The Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force will work assiduously to ensure that we bring these perpetrators to justice. Finally, I wish to state the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force has been working with several agencies, locally and internationally, to prevent illegal entries and to curb any spread of COVID-19 in Dominica. The Ministry of Public Works and Digital Economy Work Online Dominica initiative, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Partners, UNDP, and Israel Dominica, kicked off on August 13, 2020. Livelihood Program Manager for Israel Aid Dominica, Mr. McNamara Joseph, the work online program is designed to prepare participants to source jobs online to earn an income that will sustain them and their families. The work online Dominica training program course contains 12 modules where participants have to complete an assessment each week, making the program a hands-on one. The, the module was very, very well designed. Um, we, it's a 12 week training program. The intention is to ensure that persons at the end of the course will be able to earn an income to at least provide for, for themselves and their family. Um, the program is run online and we have a, an online platform where each week a module is um, rolled out and each module contains a number of lessons. And uh, we have modules, for example, how, how to how to apply for jobs online. We have mod modules indicating how to avoid scams. We have modules indicating um, how to de de develop an online presence, um, how to interview for a job. And uh, these modules are, are viewed by, by each, each um, trainee. And we also, the, the trainees are able to do assignments that to basically come out of these modules. Mr. Joseph says participants have the opportunity to complete 10 Fiverr courses which are valued at roughly 50 United States dollars each. Also we have Fiverr courses. The Fiverr courses, um, Fiverr is a platform, online platform where persons could actually um, get gigs or get jobs and Fiverr has a number of courses where persons who want to develop new skills could actually take a course, uh, a short course, and gain a particular skill. And part of this program, we have each trainee or each participant have the opportunity, has the opportunity to 
to have access to 10 fiber courses. The average cost of a fiber, cost of a fiber um, course is around 50 US. So you imagine that each person have a value of almost $500 worth of trading from Fiverr, which is a, a, a well-developed platform that provides them the opportunity to gain, a, gain new skills, gain new skills, and actually improve on the skills that they actually already have. And the participants have indicated, based on our survey that we've done, that they are very satisfied with the Fiverr courses. Mr. Joseph says the participants receive one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with the course facilitators who are experienced in the field of working online. Also, we have one-on-one -on -one calls. So the one-on-one -on -one call is every four weeks we have participants spending one hour with the facilitator to ensure that if there's an individual specific challenge or problem that the um, training is going through, that the, the facilitator could actually provide um, some intervention. These facilitators have spent over nine to ten years in working online themselves. So they are in their way of the ropes of, of, of working online and they pass on that information. The one one call um, benefits the, the individual because if the, 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 there's some challenge, if sometimes motivation, it might need some motivation to continue and the one one call basically provides that opportunity for the facilitator to actually see what gaps are present and develop um, the person's skill and com confidence in, in getting jobs online. The course has been deemed a success thus far as 94% of its participants have said the skills acquired by their participation in Work Online Dominica has enabled them to gain employment. The month of October is recognized as Breast Cancer Awareness Month under the theme I Am and I Will Support Cancer Care as breast cancer is the leading cause of death among women. President of the Dominica Cancer Society, Mrs. Yvonne Alexander, encourages women to get screened. One of the other things we normally do during Breast Cancer Awareness Month is um, one of our partners is Medicus Diagnostics. We usually write to them during the month, prior to the month of October, of course, reminding that Breast Cancer Awareness Month is approaching and, and requesting that they consider providing a discount because we're encouraging people to get tested. So we are trying to make it a little more possible because we all know what the economic situation is like. We know that some people are hard pressed for money. We know that if the ordinary um, head of household, sometimes in most cases a woman, have to debate between putting butter in the bread and having a mammogram, she'll probably opt to put butter in the bread. So we are trying to see how we can um, make it a little more, uh, uh, you know, economically um, worthwhile for her to consider, okay, I can still put some butter in the bread and still have the mammogram. Hence the relationship with medicals that we're really very grateful for. So this year again, we have requested the usual um, discount so people can make appointments, go have mammograms done at a discounted rate. Mrs. Alexander says the society encourages persons to do annual medicals. What we would like to see is that we have a culture of getting screened. Um, you know, there are some things we do annually, there are some things we do daily as part of our livelihood. And I would like to see Dominica have a culture of making a, you know, a medical examination part of what I do every year just as I celebrate my birthday and I celebrate anniversaries and so on and make it be part of what we do because, um, and of course it goes hand in hand with um, a proper diet, physical activity and all of that, you know, all of those things, the nutrition aspects of the things that you eat and drink, but more so the screening, especially if one has a family history of cancer, the screening, screening, screening because all of the individuals who have survived cancer will tell you that it was because of early detection. Mrs. Alexander says Dominica is one of the few countries where one can go to any health center and request breast exams free of cost. Get yourself screened. I mean, we, ha we have to be grateful that in the case of Dominica, a woman can enter any health district, any health center in most of the, of the communities and request, um, you know, for a nurse to show her how to do a proper breast self-examination or request a, a, a pap smear.
And now your weather update. A tropical wave is expected to result in an increase in cloudiness, light to moderate showers and possible thunderstorm activity across the area during the next 24 hours. People in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks are advised to be vigilant and to exercise caution. Slight to moderate seas are expected during the next 24 hours with wave heights up to 5 feet. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, as well as on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Shakira Pear. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.